YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Brad. I'm with the RC Supremacy. And today, guys, I've got another first for the channel. Got a freshie in the works. Going to be introducing a one of three part RC Drift build. And that's going to be featuring this RC Drift shell. Going to be doing a little bit of customizing on some Lexan pieces. Uh, got some scratch built polystyrene in the works. And uh, we're going to also incorporate a little gold leaf to the paint scheme of her. So, um, yeah, guys, I'm really excited to get going on this. Um, unfortunately, there are going to be very long videos, dauntingly long at some points, but uh, I'm going to definitely make them as entertaining as possible. You'll definitely get some value out of them. Maybe incorporate on your future projects and assist you at some point. If there's any techniques or any feedback you can leave in the comments, please do so. I'd really appreciate it. And uh, if you're stopping in for the first time, come along for the ride. Like, share, subscribe. Let's get All right, guys, prior to getting into the build and the tool that was used, I just cannot emphasize enough how important it is to plan your builds. You want to plan, you want to source, and you want to execute. You want to make sure you have all your parts in the building to complete your build from start to finish. You want to make sure you have all your thoughts on paper so you can have a guideline to get you through your entire build and uh, have something to hold yourself to a standard. And uh, you ultimately want to execute. You want to get it done in a timely fashion. You don't want to sit on on your bench you want to get it done go by those rules i promise you you'll have better success i've done this for the last few myself and have found great results i'll definitely throw some linked up uh, photos i've done a d21 in the past already and did a little bit more scaled um look with a dirt bike in the back and you know some other components i built with balsa wood prior to the poly days and um you know i had great results it wasn't a drifter but it was my first truck build my first build in general and uh i found some great success also put on paper so uh let's get into it guys let's get to the tooling in the building we have a micro set of files an exacto with a number 11 blade a sharpie a metal ruler instataki which is the mvp of the show 800 grit wet or dry sandpaper we have 3 sixteenths of an inch polystyrene tubing with an example of some styrene sheeting we'll be using Industrial scissors, needle nose pliers, the quarter inch Tamiya masking dispenser. We have a two inch Camillo tape in the rear. Testers, liquid cement, plastic magic, liquid cement. Let's get it. Alright guys, so the rest of this is going to be all voiceover. It's going to be me just explaining what I'm doing. A lot of time lapsing. I hope you enjoy it. Again, leave some feedback, leave some comments, and uh, until the outro. Alrighty, my dudes, welcome to the Team Tetsujin D21 build presented by RC Supremacy. This is a two-part body, guys. I bought it off a gentleman on Facebook for $40. He had majority of it cut out already, so I will not be doing any of that work. Uh, to kick things off, we're going to start off with some roll cage exits on the rear window. This is going to be for the rear part of the roll cage to meet the inner cab portion. I have a scrap piece from my boy Drew. It's an under effects kit from Pandora. Now we've pulled out the 1.5 Camille masking tape. This is a light duty masking tape. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the back window, uh, pen in and use the back end of a Sharpie just to solidify those uh, lines on the window. And I'm uh, going to go ahead and make some light passes with my X-Acto, uh, making sure I do not harm the back window or cut through that and uh, go from there.
one of a 20 pack of X-Acto blades will be rifling through. Guys, I cannot stress you enough how important it is to make sure you have sharp blades on there. Cutting through this much material doles it out and it can present a risk for you cutting very small things. So uh, just make sure you have sharp ones on there. I'm measuring up the back window. You know what they say, measure twice, cut once. Fortunately for me, I had two measurements on there, so I only needed to measure it once on each side. That's how it works. So reaching for the 3 16 of an inch polystyrene tubing, we're just going to ensure that the uh, roll cage exit uh, has enough material to accommodate the size of the tubing and allow it for a free exit. You're going to see me just mark up the top and bottom of the tubing to leave myself a little bit of meat right there on the outside of the Lexan to send some body screws through. stated previously this is a scrap piece of a pandora under effects kit shout out to my buddy drew he had some laying around i ran through all mine after realizing how valuable it is for scrap building and making a uh, very important process right here i'm going to go ahead and strategically lay out the vents so we can uh, match up the carbon fiber pattern on each side uh, to give it as factory of a look as possible and make it look as official as possible so uh, just spend some time here you'll see those are going to be on each side of this panel now the focus will be on scoring the outside of the vent um, very, very lightly. You want to get a ton of scores in there, guys. I was very patient on this, and uh, when I felt needed, I went ahead and broke it apart by bending it back and forth and then uh, tightening up the inside of it and finishing the process. Next, we're going to get inside of the roll cage vent, and uh, that's going to be with the hand drill. We're going to do four small holes on the inner corners of this vent. I'm um, going to go ahead and give myself an X score line to each one of those uh, holes right there. And uh, very, like I said, very gently get in there with the, hand, um, the needle nose pliers and get away that material that is not needed. Once all the cutting and exacto work was done, I went ahead and uh, grabbed the needle nose pliers and just bent back very, very lightly, uh, kind of tearing away at that excess material. And you're going to see me throw it on some sandpaper just to refine those edges, get a straight edge on that, and grab the flat, uh, flat micro file to get the rest of the inside work done. Um, you know, I got it to where I felt like it was presentable and a finished product. You'll see that here very shortly. Next, we're going to knock out the rest of the leg sand holes. This is for the port of the roll cage exit. And uh, you can see I left a little leg sand there on the outside. And that's for our body screws to go through our carbon into our window. And uh, again, very light, light passes, guys. I'm going to take the hand drill, go at the four corners again, and uh, give myself some cutting, uh, some cutting lines for the exacto to follow on our scores and uh, get the excess material out of there. <laughs>
Alrighty boys, it's time for the roll cage, the next order of business, and this right here is the Insta Tacky. It's the MVP of the show. I found this in the diorama scene for various techniques, and uh, you're gonna peep right here a uh, polystyrene from a name brand company. And the reason why I prefer this for my uh, roll cages is because it's so much more resilient than the bulk uh, purchases for sanding and filing. Uh, this, just some simple paracord. I'm using this to get some estimation lengths on hard to reach areas and uh, bends that I cannot get otherwise. Again, you wanna always cut more than what you need just for angling and sanding purposes. Uh, all these techniques are gonna be applied to every part of the roll cage as far as what I'm doing on this first piece. Uh, that's gonna be tack it up, get your measurements, make sure you have enough material. Uh, you're gonna do a rolling score with your exacto as you see here, and then go ahead and break apart get to the sandpaper, any filing necessary, and then repeat the steps. You're gonna see me do this for the entire roll cage. I'll stop and chime in when I need to. dry erase mark I'm just getting a little bit of uh, markings where I'm gonna have some angle cuts and also marking with small dots on uh, you know conjoining and meeting tubes just so I know the orientation when I put it back in there and again you're gonna see me cut with the exacto get it on sandpaper and get as flush as a fit as possible <laughs> This is fairly hard to explain what I'm doing, but I'm getting a center point of where the bend's gonna be and kind of marking um, on the outside of that center point how big my bend's gonna be and kind of working it just in that area um, for that specific fit along the door. Alrighty guys, I'm at the stage in the roll cage where I'm going to start liquid cementing. Uh, this is plastic magic. If you're not familiar with how liquid cement works on the polystyrene, it basically causes a melting fusion reaction similar to like a welding of metal and uh, basically bonds uh, bonds it wherever you, um, you apply it and of course contact points is what we're looking for. So um, I'm doing that very lightly. Again, we're just mocking this up to pry away from the shell. So we have a structure, a standalone structure where we can start um, going ahead and detailing, going ahead and doing the finishing processes. I will be adding putty and some um, fillers in here to uh, finalize and get, get some of those seams um, hidden. Uh, you're going to see me notching out the tubings for better fitting and flusher fits in some of these um, you know, contact points. And again, guys, just take your time. Make sure uh, you get something what you're happy with and uh, any visuals that you can see through the body, front windows, side windows. Make sure you, um, you know, your attentive, attentiveness to detail is uh, stressed in those areas. <laughs> Moving 
moving on, moving on, moving on, moving on, boys. We are on to Alexa and Window, and I'm going to make some very light passes with the X-Acto blade, per usual. And again, I cannot stress enough, they need to be light. You do not want to cut right through this. It's a little bit thinner plastic, believe it or not. And uh, guys, you're going to see it flawlessly peel away from the body when done right. Leave you minimal work after with sanding and filing, even though I did so just to perfect some of the lines on there. Now that I have access to the roll cage from the outside, I'm going to go ahead and finish up uh, some of this paneling that will adhere to the roll cage. It is visible from the outside of the body, so I will be doing a little design and paint work on it, which I had planned originally. And uh, I uh, put that on index card and transferred it over to uh, 0 .040 thickness of some polystyrene sheeting. And uh, I'm just going to perfect that with uh, the same sandpaper, 800 grit, until I'm happy with the product and uh, brush on some, uh, some liquid cement. Our next step in the cage, I went ahead and grabbed a dry erase marker and I penned in on the outside of the body some gussets and some supports for the inside of the roll cage. In my opinion, it's more aesthetic than anything, but uh, yeah, I went ahead and freehanded some stuff on a, a index card and transferred that over to styrene as usual and uh, put some, um, some hand drilled holes in it that I measured out with the ruler as well. Uh, everything as symmetrical as possible and went ahead and liquid cemented. remember me stating previously I use name brand polystyrene tubing on my roll cages because of how resilient it is to sanding and filing. Um, in my hand I'm gonna have right here some bulk polystyrene and this right here is fabulous stuff in both tubing and rod but does have thinner wall and a little less material for you to go ahead and sand away and uh, bend at. So I use it for detailing, um, similar to what I'm going to use it for on this cage. I use it for structural stuff. I use it for a lot of scratch building, and it generally is a really great product. Um, again, I cannot uh, suggest it enough if you're just getting into polystyrene. It's affordable, and it'll get you started learning.
fellas, I told you this was going to be a long one. She's tipping the scales at 25 plus minutes, and uh, I appreciate the 1% that made it this far. It really means a lot. And uh, guys, just to recap on today's video, we went ahead and got our roll cage, uh, the cab portion of our roll cage completely finished. Did our exit ports for the remaining of the roll cage that will be adhered to the bed, which will be the next installment. And I did a little bit of over fender work, which was off camera. It uh, will start the second segment of the series. Please look out for that, guys. Make sure you sub. Make sure you have the notification bell so you can be the first to receive this content. And also, guys, make sure you stay tuned on this project. Is it going to be dope or not? It's probably going to be a big bust, and the channel's going to go from 108 subscribers to maybe 5 subscribers. <laughs> stay tuned for it.